In this session, we are going to continue looking at time series analysis and look at the first component of time series that you may be asked to calculate in the exam. And that is, of course, the trend line. Now, there's two different methods of um, calculating the trend for a particular time series. The first is by drawing a line of best fit on our time series graph. And the second method is to calculate the trend by looking at the moving averages. So we know what our time series looks like. We have our sales activity on the y-axis and our time period on the x-axis. We could simply look at the graph and use our eyes to establish what the line of best fit is. And perhaps it would look something like this. However, this is not particularly reliable because clearly different people might draw the line of best fit in different places on the graph. So instead of just drawing our line by using our eyes, we can establish where exactly this line of best fit should be by calculating the centered moving averages. So let's have a look at an example to see how this works. So we're given sales information for a number of quarters over years one, two, and three. So if we have a look, we're told then that in quarter one of year one, sales will be 18 units. In quarter two, sales will be 20. And in quarters three and quarter four, sales will be 34 and 44. Now, if we look at year two, we can see that in year two, sales for quarters one and two will be relatively low. Whereas in quarters three and four, sales jump up to 38 and 48. So, by just looking at the data, this provides us with some understanding of the seasonality of this product. So, for this company, we would expect that in quarters one and quarters two, our sales will be below the trend line. Whereas in quarters three and quarters four, we would expect sales to be above the trend line. Now, in order to establish what our where our trend line should be, we are going to have to calculate the moving averages. Now, to calculate the moving averages, all we want to do is calculate our average sales for a four-quarter period. So we're going to start at the top, and if we look at year one, our first four quarters will be Q1 to Q4 of year one. The total sales figures for that, those four quarters then, if we add them together, so year one, quarters one to four, total sales, will be 18 plus 20 plus 34 plus 44. So our total sales will be 116. So our average sales then, or what we refer to as our moving average, will be 116 divided by the number of quarters, 4. So our average sales in the first four quarters are 29. So we'll put this information into our table. Our moving total for the first four quarters we said was 116. Our moving average then is 29 units. Now, when we're calculating our moving averages then, what we have to do now is look at the next four quarters. But I don't mean in year two, I mean we start in quarter two, year one, and we're going to calculate the moving average for quarter two, year one, up to quarter one of year two. So that's our next set of four quarters. 
So our second moving average then is for year one, quarter two, up to year two, quarter one. The total sales for those four quarters will be 20 plus 34 plus 44 plus 22. Add those together on your calculator, you should get 120. So our moving average then will be 120 divided by 4, so 30 units. Again, we'll put this back into our table. So our moving total for our next set of four quarters is 120. Average sales will be 30. Now what we are doing each time by calculating the average figures for a four quarter period, we are removing our seasonal variation. But we need to keep going, we have to calculate our next moving average. So again, we just move up one quarter. Now we're going to be starting in quarter three of year one and calculating the average then for the next four quarters. So that will be Q3 year one up to quarter two in year two. So our third moving average be Q3 year one up to Q2 year two. So our total sales will be 34 plus 44 plus 22 plus 20. We add them together, our total should be 120. So our moving average is 120 divided by 4 gives us 30. So we'll put that back into our table, our moving total 120, average of 30. Now we need to keep going and do this for the next four quarter period. So this time our four quarter period will be Q4 year 1 up to Q3 year 2. You do the calculations, you should get a total of 124 and an average of 31. Our next four quarter period after that will be the four quarters in year two, where our total is 128, and our moving average is 32. If we continue on, add these totals and these averages into our table, Our last moving average then is for quarters one to four of year three. And we can't go any further because if we wanted to calculate an additional moving average, we would need to know what the sales figures are for quarter one of year four. So we can stop there. We have our moving averages for each four quarter period. However, we are going to have to take an additional step. So when we're using moving averages to establish our trend line, we need to link each average figure to a particular period. If we have a look at our first moving average of 29, this average relates to the four quarter period of Q1 to Q4 in year one. If we were to link this then to a particular time period, because it's the average of four quarters, this particular moving average relates to the time period exactly in the middle of quarter two and quarter three. 
So, if we want to link our averages to a particular time period, then we are going to have to average the averages. So we take our first two moving averages, 29 and 30, and find the average of these two figures. 29 plus 30 divided by 2 gives us a centered moving average of 29.5. Now by calculating the average of the averages, we have linked our moving average to a particular time period. So in Q3 of year one, our average sales are 29.5. If we do the same thing again, so find the average of our next two moving averages, so that'll be 30 plus 30 divided by 2. Our next centered moving average then is 30. And again, these are our average sales then in quarter 4 of year 1. We calculate the average of our next two averages. So that'll be 30 plus 31 divided by 2 gives us 30.5. And these are our average sales then in quarter one of year two. Our next two averages are 31 and 32, so 31 plus 32 divided by 2, 31.5. So these are our average sales in Q2 of year two. Next average is 32 plus 31 divided by 2 will give us 31.5 again. Next average will be 31 plus 31 divided by 2, so that just gives us 31. Nearly there. Next average will be 31 plus 32 divided by 2. So 31.5. There are average sales for Q1 of year 3. And our last average then, 32 plus 34 divided by 2, gives us 33. So, by calculating our centred moving averages then, we know what our average sales figures are for each of the quarters we've highlighted. And now we could plot this information on the graph to establish exactly where our trend line should be. Now, we do need to work out what exactly is our trend. So, if we've drawn our trend line, On the graph, we know that sales increase over our time period. But we want to know exactly how much will sales increase in any given quarter. If we have a look at our centred moving averages to calculate our overall trend, it will be our total increase in the trend or in the average divided by the number of time periods. In this case, the number of quarters. So, if we look back at our data, what have our centred moving averages told us? Well, in quarter three, of year one, our average sales were 29.5. In quarter two of year three, our average sales are 33. So what is the overall increase then in our average sales? That's just going to be our average sales in quarter two of year three, which are 33, minus our average sales in quarter two, three of year one, which were 29.5.
So our increase in sales then is 3.5 units. So that is our overall increase in our average sales. Then we just need to divide it by, well, how many time periods have passed during this overall increase in our average sales. If we want to count the time periods, we can just count from quarter three to quarter four of year one. That's one time period. Two, three, four, five, six, seven. So a very sophisticated method then of calculating the number of time periods which have passed. So our trend then, our overall increase is 3.5 units of sales and the number of time periods is seven. So our trend then is 0 0.5. What we are saying here is that sales increase by 0 0.5 per quarter, excluding any seasonal variation. So we've calculated the first component of our time series, the trend line. What we will have to do next then is calculate the seasonal variation.